And now, weighing in out of the blue corner, Josh the Pong Thompson. 100% agree. And on the other mic, he weighs in from the red corner, Big John McCarthy. Well, welcome to the Weighing In Podcast, where we had a very busy October 19th with a lot of fights happening. You had the PFL from Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. You had the UFC from the Apex in Las Vegas. We had some good fights that happened. We had some big-time upsets. We had all kinds of things happening that we get to talk about. But the first thing to talk about is George is back. He's feeling better. It's time for everyone to give George the uplifting prayers that he needs to make it to where he is absolutely ready to annihilate the earth. You go, Georgie. Second, we've got Josh Thompson with a Thompson jersey in the background. He's changing his background. I don't know why, but he is. And now he's got a pale look on his face. He's looking a little lethargic. Yeah. He's not the Josh Thompson that we all know. It's okay. Where'd you come up with this intro today, man? It's very I don't know. Very depressing. <laughs> oh, come George, on. Is, George is doing well, and I'm over here what, dying. What are you talking, like, Josh? Yeah, my, the, the whole thing with George was fine. No, uh, but your boys, I guess the Bulls p- pulled it off today, right? Dude, Bulls beat Alabama. Today. Bam. And right now, oh, Georgia is ahead 23-8 to eight against uh, Ooh, dude, Texas. Texas? Damn. Yeah. Whew, yeah. We got ourselves Dude, a little, a little bit Georgia, of look at, Georgia, like Georgia you know, football. Georgia football is nice. Georgia football is tough. Right? Mm-hmm. And they got some studs. Yeah, but Texas is number one right now. Georgia's number yeah, five. Yeah, I know they are, but they're I not going to be. <laughs> yeah, not anymore. Not after today. It's still the third uh, third quarter. Yeah, but that, that was the big that was the big test. That was the yeah. big question. Well, how did I, Texas play uh, play against Georgia? I'm not saying, look, Texas is good. Yeah. But how did they play against Georgia? Did they, you know, if they lose and they lose close, oh well, you know, it happens. It's just part of the season. You know, the, the whole playoffs are going to be different now. So it's yeah, I know, cool. I know. I'm kind of kind of like how it's going to be. Honest. I'm kind of excited for it too. Yeah, looking forward to it. Um, everything sound good on your end there, George? Yeah, you sound fine. Stop being okay. Worried. I'm just, I'm He's a little picky, isn't he? Stuff. Yeah. I'm sorry, George. You didn't. You're not. You're not getting that from me, are you? And if you, you know, don't sound fine, we'll find out in the comments. Don't worry. <laughs> All right, guys, I have a little bit of a cough drop in my mouth, so if you hear a little clinking Is around, that what's in your mouth? No, uh, you oh, shut so. your whore mouth over there, buddy. <laughs> you shut your whore mouth over there. Um, uh, man, we had a very long weekend uh, of fights today. It started yeah. early. They started oh. really early, and then they moved on. I'm pretty, I was pretty impressed with some of the fights. Some of the fights were... Oh, yeah, well, come on, that's... You can't have all of them be good. It just just doesn't happen. I wish it did. Okay. Sometimes you get those special moments where just about every fight is mm-hmm. freaking good. But that's yeah. rare. Today wasn't those that one of those days. No. <laughs> Today wasn't one of those special moments. No, but no, hard no. fought. Hard fought. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, hey, before we get started, though, guys, I want to make sure you guys all know that this episode is brought to you by BetUS. And I also want to thank you guys. Uh, these guys right here, Element. Element been, been oh. dehydrated all day. It was actually you mean this. E- oh, sorry. There you go. This element. Boom, oh, baby. Which one you got? The uh, this is the, the cherry, black cherry lime. lime. Yeah, I like that one too. The watermelon right now is is doing me good. So uh, yeah, great you, product. You're, you're, you're in love with the watermelon. I am in love with the watermelon. You I got, are. You I just got a case, I got a case of it, so I got a lot to drink. <clears throat> sorry, guys. Well, speaking um, of Element, we got to see a ton of Element commercials during the Battle of the Giants. Yeah, we did. They've been Almost. working with. Uh, they've been working with the PFL. They've been working. I saw that they were sponsoring some of the fighters too. I think they sponsored um, uh, Austin Vanderford, I believe, mm. and his fight uh, on the LFA last night. Okay. Yeah. I didn't even know that Austin fought. Yes, in the he LFA did. last night. Yeah, he was. He fought in the uh, in the in the. Uh, for Who did the, he fight against? He was, I guess apparently he's the champion. Who did he fight against? What do you mean he's the champion? Yeah. Who makes this rules? He used what? to fight in the LFA before. Yeah. So what? Okay. And I guess they were just saying that he's the, un, he's still undefeated uh, in the LFA, and that he is now, I guess, the champion. So either he's now or he was. I think he's just now the champion. Which makes sense. Yeah. He's, well, he's winning just... in life, that's for sure. Oh, yes, he is. He married up for sure. <laughs> Dude, he married so far. 
Um, <coughs> he started climbing a ladder and never looked down. Yeah. Good for him. That's the way it's supposed to be. I think it's hilarious because he, I, I love the fact that he doesn't care what people think and he just yeah. goes about his business and he's a cat man and he doesn't, it doesn't bother him at all. Okay. And I'm like, hey, man, you live your life, dude, because look, none of those people are paying your bills. So what do you give a shit? Okay, <laughs> here's my question. Yeah. He fought in the LFA. Did you see what weight he fought at? 170. Instead of 185. Yep. Damn. Mm-hmm. Damn, damn. Good on you. I mean, him. maybe she's been starving him. <laughs> <laughs> starving him of what? That slap uh, fight money isn't coming in. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> man she's man's going that. hungry <laughs> um overall though man i think he's uh he's always been a really good fighter i just don't know if he, he wants to compete at a super high level i think he enjoyed that, the fight that might but be it there's that's okay level. yeah there's a there's a level that just comes along with like when you're at that at the highest level competing with some of the highest top athletes man there's so much more pressure that's put on you if you can go out there and just fight and have and fun have fun with it. Maybe, you know, having the understanding, like, I'm going to have tough fights, but I can get away with some mistakes here and there, you know, and be able to get myself out of it. So, hey, whatever, man. If you're, let's just say he's making, you know, 20, 30 grand a fight, you know, I don't think he is at LFA. Well, I'll tell you, but, yeah, just, but, but I'm sorry. He ain't making, look, he, it's not like he was the main event of the LFA. I think he, I think he started off the main card. Oh, did he? Isn't isn't that what it was? Yeah, he was. Uh, I don't believe that he might not have been the start of Mink, but he was down the list yeah. of uh, fighters with it. Interesting. So he 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 wasn't making a whole lot of money. I know Eddie well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie oh, still owes me money. Ed Source. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, look, let's, let's go ahead and just d- deep dive right into the uh, the UFC. Uh, do you want to talk UFC or you want to talk PFL first? I think we should talk. Well, let's let's go with the UFC since it was just it just is on. just on currently in our minds. Let's go with that because we had Anthony Fluffy Hernandez yeah. in the main event taking on Michelle Pereja, mm-hmm. and it was a one sided beatdown. Yeah. <laughs> It was. Outside of the first 30 seconds of the first round. Oh, dude, yeah. The, well, the, I'll, I'll give it a minute and a half. Okay, okay. I'll give it a minute and a half. One Come on. good teep kick. Dude, there was a couple of good body shots in there. He hurt him. He did hurt oh, him. Yeah. You could see it. It was like, oh, yeah, uh, he's not breathing. <laughs> but he's tough, and we knew he was, and that was the whole yeah. point. I mean. This is a guy. This is, you got you to gotta kill to stop. He's a zombie. Yeah, come forward. He'll just walk you down, come forward, and he's just putting pressure. And, and guys like Michelle Bahia have a hard time dealing with that. They don't fight well off their back foot. They don't handle pressure as well. And when you start to feel that pressure, your conditioning, your cardio, start to go out the door. And he was never a cardio king. I mean, you oh, see no. the two of them inside the cage? Oh, my Michelle God. Michelle Bahia looked like, a, looked like a, a, a light heavyweight. And he used to be 170. It's nuts, man. He is <laughs> he's so in. big. Hey, did you hear Anthony Hernandez talking at the end of it? No. He goes, dude, he was so strong. He goes, I go, well, I'm not, I'm not going to get regular takedowns on this guy. No. Yeah. That's no. like, well, at least you were smart enough to figure it out soon. You know, I really admire Paul Felder's commentary. I love because he's like, look, he just keeps him guessing. He's got him moving. Like all of what Paul says, there's no fluff behind it. It's just all reality. The reality is like you're getting a true break fight breakdown commentary, and I enjoy that because I want to, even though I know I'm seeing it, I want to see what you're seeing, and I want I want you to kind of translate it to me like as if I'm a five year old trying to understand what's going on, and yeah. that's exactly what Paul does. Paul does a great job of that. No, so I, I enjoy Paul's, listening. Paul's outstanding at what he does. Yeah, he's 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 easy to listen to. He doesn't he doesn't oversell it. And that's, I think that's the real thing that I like out of what he does. You know, he, he gets behind, you know, what's happening in the, in the, in the cage, but he doesn't oversell it. You know, yeah. when something's happening that's exciting, he, you know, he gets excited. But when something's happening, you go, yeah, it's not a big deal. He, he doesn't get, oh, he's, he's, yeah. he's got the guillotine. No, he doesn't stop. You know, and so I, I do yeah. appreciate him. There was some of that when I was watching the PFL. Oh my! And I was like, uh, "Calm down, guys. It's not even clear." Man, I tell you what—if you listen to, I don't know. Yeah. Never mind. Never mind. We'll talk about we'll talk about the PFL here in a little bit. Uh, look, overall, look, 
I thought it was a great fight between the two of them. Uh, and even though it was one sided, but Fluffy showed a lot. He showed a lot in terms of what he can do. It's hard to deal with those big guys. They're not the easiest guys to finish. But Shelby got up like he was frustrated that Herb stopped the fight. I'm like, what are you frustrated about? He just saved you from getting your ass kicked for another minute and a half. Herb Herb did what a referee is supposed to do in the yeah. fact that as a referee, you're watching someone who, to name me the rounds that he won. Okay, maybe if you want to go, he won the first round. Okay. He didn't win the second. He didn't win the third. He didn't win the fourth. You know that. And you're watching someone that you can sit there and say, okay, he hasn't won a round since the first round. Does he have a puncher's chance here yeah. in this fight? Well, not off his back. He does. He's, you know, he can't land anything. That's not going to work. So he doesn't have a puncher's chance. Does he have a submission attack that he's got a submitter's a chance? No. He's got no submission game for Anthony Hernandez that he's going to do anything. He had one chance at a at a guillotine if you want. That didn't work. And now he's exhausted. His arms are full of lactic acid. He can't do anything. And so the whole point is, where is he at? What's happening? And yeah, there's time left in the round and how much time and do I need to see this guy get beat any longer so it goes to a decision instead of me stopping it, making it, hey, you're not fighting intelligently. It's a TKO. It's better for the athlete, even though maybe they don't like it. It's still a loss. And it's the right thing to do to get them out this as soon as you can instead of letting them take more damage. He's already taken enough. Yeah, but he took a lot. A lot of fighters, they won't just turn over and give you their back. A lot of fighters won't just... Uh, no, and he didn't. Yeah, he, he fought through it. There was a couple of times where he was not going to concede that submission. Most fighters no. would turn and give the back, or most fighters would turn and give him the side choke. Hernandez was searching for that side yeah, choke. Oh, he was looking for it. Yeah, he wanted absolutely. that. Uh, it just wasn't coming. And I think the strength of Michelle Bahia was coming through. No matter how tired he is, he was still physically strong. And you could just see the size difference when they were standing inside the cage. I was like, holy shit. This is and Michelle Penn, he used to, used to fight at 170. Yeah. He fought a guy named Tristan Connolly, who was a 145-pound fighter at 170. And Tristan yeah. won. It's like you know, all because he was cutting too, so much weight, he gassed out. And I'll give him credit. At, at 185, he, went to, he was going the five rounds. Yeah. He went into the fifth round. He was getting his ass handed to him as far as the beatdown, and he kept on coming back. So that's not easy. That's not easy to do. Well, guys, look, I want to also say that we kind of gave you a little, I wouldn't say faulty information, but, man, my gut told me that Fluffy was going to win by submission. I had him also winning, so I picked him straight up on my bet USA odds. Or bet US, USA. I did the same. My bet US odds is I had him winning straight up. I think it was... What was that plus one thirty five? I think is what it was, and then also yeah. due to win by submission for me. At the I think time it was a minus one thirty five. Minus one. My, sorry, minus one thirty five. Sorry, my apologies. Yeah. And for me to uh to for him to win by submission, which was a plus one seventy five. Plus one. I had a one eighty five. Really? Well, mine was. I think I did my video. I want to say video. that's bullshit. Well, I did my video a day before you. <laughs> So <laughs> the odds changed. People took my advice and the odds went down a little bit. And so people lost because they lost money, man. Hey, so not I. as bad as I did Tyler the same Phillips thing. bet. I did, the, I did the same, man. I did the same. I had him, I had him say it. I had it parlay that to a, a oh. one plus 175 for a submission win because I thought that was the way he was going to get him. I thought so too. And it was definitely not. Yeah, I mean, I was I, my whole take was that if Fluffy could survive the first round, all he had to do is survive was the first it. minute and a half. He didn't well, survive the first round, just a minute and a half. Yeah. And uh, man, he looked phenomenal after that. Just kept putting the, putting the pace. I, would you say there's a little bit of like a Nick and Nate Diaz in Fluffy? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. You know, coming from where he's at and everything, you look at him, you look at the way he fights, you look at you know he doesn't have quite the same attitude, but he's yeah. got attitude. Yeah, you know he's got attitude. You know when he's in there and stuff, he's a, he's actually a classy fighter. And, and Nick and Nate are both actually classy as far as you know. If if you haven't done anything you know dirty to them, they're they're classy as far as the way they fight. So I think he's very much like them. I think you know he's got the same type of uh, let's say gas tank. Yeah, he's got the ability to push the pace on a fight. He's got he doesn't have that major power, but he's got volume. And he's got a great submission game. So I think he's absolutely a guy that you can look and you, the parallels all match up. I think also, too, that they kind of somewhat attract the same fan base. Yeah. 
I, I, yeah. I think it's just no the, doubt about whether it. it's the tattoos, whether, whether it's the haircut. I don't know, whatever it is. But I feel haircut. like same type of fan base. Yeah, he's got that nice little, you know, uh, fade. Little, uh, I was, was going to say, Nick and Nate don't have any kind of fancy. No, I get haircut. it. Yeah, they don't have any fancy. No, they just they have a nice little fade on the sides. That's it, man. But I mean, They're like clean. overall, he the guy fights his ass off. I love it. He was uh, he did everything right. Uh, let's go ahead and move down to Rob Font and Kyler Phillips. I'll tell you what, man. You know, this the first round went exactly like I thought the fight was going to go, and it was obviously uh, we talked about on the feet. I thought Rob Font is actually a little bit better. You know that uh, he's got a little bit more of the pure boxing to him. He doesn't throw a ton of kicks and stuff. He's throwing more, but his boxing is really sharp. His hands yeah. are good. He takes a good shot. But I thought the ground was going to be the difference. And if he hit the ground, I thought Kyler would be all over him in the first round. It was a, just like I thought, but. From that point, you know, Rob Fopp said, uh-oh, I ain't hitting the ground again. And really, he didn't. I mean, at the end of the second round, you know, he hit the ground, big deal. He uh, kind of hit it a little bit, you know, in the third, but right up. And he took over with his stand-up, you know, and yeah. he had the cleaner striking, and he deserved the win. You know, the 29-28 was exactly what it should have been, and I don't know if it's the difference of what, you know, Faraz has brought to him or it was just, you know, the change ignited a little bit, you know, back, but he looked as good in that fight as I've seen him in his last couple of fights. Uh, I thought, I thought things were, were pretty noticeable right off the get when they both came out that Rob Font looked like he was more muscular than yeah. Kyler Phillips. He looked but like, yeah, he looked like he thing. was the stronger fighter. He also looked like he was the bigger fighter. Um, and I'm not, I'm not, I haven't seen that before from him like, against other guys that have fought him in that weight class. I feel like he's just been equal with them or maybe even a little bit smaller or just slightly. He looked a lot bigger with his back size, his hips, his, his, the, his legs and everything. He looked like the bigger fighter in this fight. And you could yeah. tell because when Kyler Phillips got a little bit more tired after that first round, not doesn't take much. You could oh. tell that Rob Font was just bullying him around then. Yeah. Like, no, he was able to muscle his way through things. Yep. Yep. I can muscle my way through things. You can't get in deep enough yeah. on it. If you are, I'm just going to whizzer you off. I'm going to fling you off, you know, like I would a little child on my leg. And that's kind of what it felt like. It looked when I was watching, I'm like, wow, Rob is just manhandling him, literally like manhandling yeah. him. Oh, dude. In the second round, shocking. especially. Yeah. It was shocking. Second, and it was the contrast of what you watched all through the first round, except, well, let's say that, you know, he got up in the last 30 seconds, we'll say. Yeah. You know, and, you know, he went after him, but he couldn't get that round back. So, but he carried that 30 seconds into the second round and man just turned it up. Look, that was, in my opinion, the way I, the way I look at that fight is that's a veteran fight. This is when we talk about veteran fighters taking on the young up and coming guy. And is that young up and coming guy ready to fight a guy that has fought and has all this experience and can change directions in the fight. <laughs> yeah. And that was really what Rob Font did. He changed the direction of the fight, and Kyler Phillips couldn't match it after dominating the first round. Yeah, Kyler Phillips was well, the biggest betting odds uh, came from him. And so he was, I think when they were showing the odds, they were saying he was a minus 575. Oh, I think you and I minus. looked at the odds. It was like minus Never. 420, though. 425, yeah. I think. I still like wouldn't that. do that. Yeah, but I mean, you know, we were. We were looking at it, and I was like, man, that's just too rich for my blood if I was going to put yeah. money down on him. doesn't matter. I would potentially go the other way, though, with Rob Font. It's obviously sure. easier said than done now. You know, hindsight's 50-50 yeah. and all. So I would have just been, hey, you know, let's throw 10 bucks down, 20 bucks down on Rob Font. That's what I've always talked about. Anytime you have an opportunity where someone is such a heavy favorite and you know that the other person has a good chance of winning as well, throw, throw a little bit down, 10 bucks, 15, 25 bucks. Yeah. If you throw 50 down, you know, you're making 250 somewhere around there. So it would have been worth it at that price. Um, you know, but, uh, Rob, man, I gotta be honest. I don't know. Like you said, if it was, uh, uh, for Oz or not, but he came out confident. I think the, 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 the way that his corner was talking to him was kind of settling his nerves. He yep. looked really good. He, he looked really good. My old, my the whole, my whole knock on him, John has always been, Use a little bit more kicks to help set up your hands and use your hands to help set up some of your kicks because yeah. he's, he's so skilled, you know, and he's physically strong. I mean, look, he was he was putting it on Chito Vera. You know, Chito ended up getting a title shot and all these other things. Like, like Rob is right there. 
Oh yeah. So I mean, we you know a, a little nod here or there, or having a good moment in a fight in a, in, a, in a round gets him right back up to where he should be in terms of being in the top four or five. He looked fantastic tonight, and uh, you know everyone had betting against him. I think that just kind of motivated him a little bit more. But good stuff for him, man. Very, very, uh, very good, very great performance. Great performance. Yeah, great. Absolutely, I agree. Especially after losing the round, he did the way he lost the first round. Oh. Just you know, trust me, yeah. Controlled and that, dominated. That's that was the one that you know. When you're going back to the stool, you're going, "Son of a bitch!" Yeah, what happened? You know, yeah. But yeah. obviously, no problem for him. Charles Johnson taking on Sumajari. It was a good fight. That was yeah. a, it. Was a back and forth. Uh, I'm, I'm not too sure Charles Johnson won it though. Ooh. It was close. It was. I, I'm okay with it. Yeah, I'm okay with it. But I was, I'm just like looking at it, and I was like, man, Charles Johnson took a lot of shots. Sumajari had his moments. Charles Johnson had his moments. And he did almost, it looked like, finish him. Yeah, you know, absolutely won that round. But there was some good, there was some, the, it really comes down to the first round because the third round was won by Sumajari. The second round was won by Charles Johnson. So it's all in who you gave that first round to. So, and it was a close round, but good fight by both of them. You know, here's the thing with Charles Johnson is it makes it hard to judge his fights because he moves so much. He's so herky jerky, twitches, fast twitch. You know, a lot of feints, a lot of movement, but not a lot comes out. Yeah. And so, if you're a judge, you can't be you can't be captivated by something like that. You've got to be really focus on what he's throwing, what he's landing. And I think it's easy. I don't know. Maybe the judges can't be swayed like me. But I mean, I look at him and I go. Man, it looks like he did a lot that round. He didn't do shit sometimes. They're like, damn, what'd you do? You threw like one little half oblique kick, and then you threw kind of a jab, and you didn't really do much. I get it. Um, my only knock would be that I had him win in the fight, but I could yeah. also be like, man, if I actually went back through him, be like, okay, how many times did I actually count his movement as a strike when nothing really came out? Yeah, you know? That was part, and, of, it. That was part of it. Almost like the uh, Jose Aldo and Marlon Moraes fight where, you know, Jose was yeah. just coming forward, coming yeah. forward. A lot of face. Jose's moving, moving, man. Not Nothing's throwing. coming out. Nothing's landing. So nah. that can be easily – that can easily sway uh, judges, I think. But I, I thought I thought Charles fought a good fight. I thought Sumo Darje fought a good fight. I thought both of them did. It was, it was a, a good fun, fight. Good matchup. It match was up. a fun fight. It, here's yeah. the other thing. Charles Johnson is somebody that he wins two or three and then he loses one or two. And then he wins two or three. But I also really enjoy watching him fight. Damn. What I don't understand is why he doesn't wrestle more. He's got some good wrestling. I, I, I'm, I'm, he tried. Let's be honest. He was trying. I mean, John, at he, times he, he he's working for it. What's that? He, he hit that hip toss on Sumo Jar, Darje when oh, yeah. he came up on the double leg. He hit him right yeah. to the hip toss, right to his back. I was like, oh, snap, son. Yeah, that was, that was sweet. <laughs> that yeah. was beautiful. Yeah. That'd be like yeah, he was, was trying to through a like lot of it. And I thought Sumo was, he was, he was negating a yeah. ton of what he was doing. He was. And, so, he was. and, and, and I, I'm being honest, I was super impressed with Sumajari as far as, this is probably why I thought he was doing so good, his his defensive wrestling has gotten so much better. Mm. And then even when he was on his back, dude, he was throwing up submissions. I love, you know, you, you're always talking about two ferrets. Mm -hmm. It was two ferrets going after it. They were, they were going back and forth. That was, a, that was a nice scramble between the two. So, But really fun fight. Yep, next fight. Ah, we had Cameron smotherman taking on jake hadley and i, I got to give smotherman credit he took this last second he's a replacement fighter and he came in he fought his ass off he took some big shots he gave some big shots i really enjoyed watching him i thought he overall his volume was way above hadley's his, his ability to, to land and he, he landed some hard shots at times he took some too but i thought you know coming in last minute if you're going to come in the way he did he put on a great performance uh, you're saying he came in the last minute. He came in on three days' notice. You know he can't. You know where he came from, right? What do you mean came from? He can't, he was actually in uh, Riyadh getting ready to corner Rafian Stotts and flew. Oh my Riyadh god, you're here. kidding me! No, I didn't know that. Yeah, that uh, Rafian Stotts just put out a press thing after his fight today, saying that yeah, Cameron Smotherman was with me this week. He had to fly out when he got the call. He's gone. Well, I know you know because he was, he was on the. I, I watched him on the Dana White's Contender, and, I, and he lost that. You know, and I was like, the, the kid's good, though. He's fun to yeah. watch. And then all of a sudden, I see him he's fighting Jake Hadley, and I was like, I remember that kid, right? Mm. And he's good. He's a tough kid. Let me go back to, do you think that eye poke should have been at one point? 
it was the second one. And if you're looking at the way it happened, you know, it didn't have, it happened. He, it's like he was throwing his hand out as an offensive thing. And then his fingers are out. It's like, you can't have that. Yeah. Most of the time it's in a defensive fashion. You're trying to back away and your hands going out to stop somebody. That is not what happened. And since it, with the way it was, I'm all for the one point deduction. Got it. Got it. Uh, yeah, I thought he fought good. I thought he looked clean and crisp for someone who just got off the plane coming from Riyadh, <laughs> you know, and then that's, showing up and having to that's make That's amazing. Money. I did not know that he went all the way from Riyadh to Vegas yep. to do that fight. That's amazing. That's amazing. And, and th- yeah. Jet lag, just all that other stuff. Then make None of that. And then, like, psh, what a stud. Yeah. Uh, next fight. Darren Elkins taking on Daniel Pineda. Well, we said that we thought this was going to be, you know, this is two older guys, but it's going to be yeah. a good fight. It was a good fight. It was a good this fight. Is, this is a scrap, man. <laughs> Darren Elkins is, he, you know, he's got the damage tattoo, and he is damaged. <laughs> he is absolutely, he puts out damage. He takes damage. But if you were going to look, it's normally Elkins that's got all the cuts and everything at the end of the fight. It was Daniel Pineda. And, and you know, and those were, in looking at, you know, what occurred, Daniel Pineda was winning that first round that he got cut. Yeah, but boy, by the end of the fight, it looked like someone had taken a razor blade in there. His forehead was open, his eyes were closed, and with cuts above him. I mean, he had—he looked like he got in a knife fight. I mean, he chased that that first arm and guillotine or that guillotine he had, and it was tight, round, and it was tight, and it was tight, just kept moving out, jiggling out, turning to his side, turning his neck. He, he eventually scrambled. He got to the top position. I was like, "Holy shit!" This is why they call you this wild, whatever it is, this crazy kid. Because he just kept moving and kept moving, and finally wiggled his way out of there. I was so, yeah. I, I got to be honest, I was like, man, he's done. He's done. They're still dry. He's no. done. Nope. Nope. No. And then he just started kind of mounting his comeback, as we saw. It was a, which he's done so many times before. Just mounted the comeback and came in strong and finished second round, third round, very strong. Overall, though, man, really fun fight. Definitely a way to open up your card. Oh, yeah. And you did. And I want to say this because Daniel Pineda put down his gloves, said it's his last fight. Mm-hmm. God bless him. He fought in the UFC, he fought in Bellator, he fought in the PFL, he fought in Elite XC. I remember him back from wow. that. You know, he's the guy that, you know, he has fought everywhere. He's put on great performances just about everywhere that he went. Sometimes he didn't win, but he put on a great performance. He's a tough dude. He's a very good coach. And I hope he sticks with the coaching now, too, and just takes that as his next career. Yeah, I think we look, we just had Michael Bisming on and we were talking with him too. Like fighters, we, I don't think, not a lot of us want to own gyms. I wanted to own a gym. I opened my gym before I was done fighting and, you know, so I could help build up clientele and use it as a platform to do it. But if, if you don't want to own your own gym, which I highly don't, I highly recommend not owning one. Um, <laughs> I just simply tell people like getting involved in coaching, it does a lot for your mental health. It, coming off of a fighter, Get attached to the get attached to the some of the teammates that you have, being able to give them a little extra attention that they're not getting from the from the main coaches, and then building your rapport with them. Like look, King Mo, uh, Mike Brown, you know, like these coaches are, are coming around. They're former fighters, and they're give they have a lot of input to these these younger fighters. And I think it's definitely an avenue to race into. I mean, if I if I had not moved from from uh, California to Texas, man. I mean, there's not a whole lot of MMA gyms here. I know that Fortis is down the way, but it's still about an hour and a half away. But, um, you know, I wouldn't have minded moving into Florida and just being around Kill Cliff or being around American Top Team or being around, like, just for, just to be inside the gym. You know, I love that, man, because right now yeah. I feel like a fat slob pig. But it's, uh, <laughs> you know, but it, it does. That's because you've been looking at Justin Wilcox's Instagram. Jesus, man, this Holy guy. shit. <laughs> Dude. The silverback has not changed. It's disgusting. I hate oh, that. Oh, he's hysterical. Man. It's he's so he's such a great guy though. He's one of the there was, but there was a guy. I swear to God, in the PFL that was on the. Co- I looked. I go. Oh my God. Yeah, that dude looks like Justin Wilcox as far as body is. One hundred forty five yeah. pounder. He's got so much muscle on him. Jeez, man. Yeah. Small. Send you a text. Big Tell guy. me that dude's not taking a page out of Justin Wilcox's. Yeah. It's insane. Exercise then, book. Justin's in his forties. I'm like, how the hell do you look like that still? Jeez, man. All right. Anyways, I, I told you, I, was, I fucking hate this guy. <laughs> Said you bitch. Uh, any other fights on here you want to talk about? I yeah, like, there was, Go ahead. There was a couple, but uh, Jean uh, Matsumoto against oh, yes. Brad Katona. Dude, <sighs> hell of a fight. 
Great fight, man. Matsumoto Hell of a performance. Good. He needs to he needs to kind of figure out how not to get so tired carrying all that muscle for such a body a small body frame. But yeah. he seemed like he sort of slowed down significantly in the end of the second and the end of the third. You know, but uh, overall, I thought it was a really mm -hmm. good performance by him. He's a, he's a tough fighter. Both of oh, them, yeah. too. Because Katona is tough as hell. Yeah, he could take some shots. Oh, yeah, because yeah, you could tell, like, uh, Matsumoto had the power, uh, and he was, like, kind of stalking and stalking, and then he kind of became the one being uh, stalked towards the end. Oh, yeah. You know, and Katona just took all the big shots and then started putting pressure on him towards the end of the fight. It was a good fight, though. Really good fight. Was. I was texting you going, hey, man, this is a really good fight right now. Yeah. So overall, though, good. Uh, what else you got? Anything else on here? Nah. Nah. It's all good. All right, guys. Well, hey, that's going to wrap up our UFC talk. And like I said before, this episode is brought to you by Element. Element, stay salty, my friends. Stay salty right stay here. Salty. If you want to check out their product, they've got the cherry lime. They've got the watermelon. they got the citrus. <clears throat> Sorry, they have the raspberry. They have the grapefruit. John likes the grapefruit. I like the grapefruit as well. They are definitely best served cold. So if you can buy them in the cans as the sparkling, Absolutely a great, amazing product. John and I both drink them. And uh, I look, they're good, and they're good and they're safe to give to your kids, too. If they're playing sports, activities. My son had a soccer game today. Then he had a football game right after. So he popped about a half a can of the Element. Felt good going into his football game and ready to go. It was about 85 degrees at like 10 a.m. today. So it was, uh, it was getting a little hot. Also, too, make sure you guys subscribe to us over at OnlyFans. We're continuing our partnership with them over there. And uh, I'll be doing an extra live over there. Um, we did a live last week. I know a lot of you guys missed it, but I'm going to be doing another live probably before the end of the month, and I will go ahead and let you guys know. We also have a lot of interviews dropping the next week, this week, next week, all these other things that are coming around. So we've got some big uh, some big interviews that we've been uh, keeping in the can for a second, and uh, we've got some that are dropping this week, and we're going to drop some more next week. So hope you guys enjoy the extra work we're putting in for you guys. I want to thank you guys so much for continuing to support us. Join our membership program, $4.99, so you guys can win some um, – giveaways which by the way i've got a mail off to alex i keep reminding myself i know george is telling me hey buddy alejandro yeah, we gotta get alejandro his package not that kind of package ladies and gentlemen but the package uh because you know like look youtube does not like when people say they're giving giveaways and they don't actually give them away so we will be doing that him. making sure that alejandro is getting his package so subscribe to us over uh, here on YouTube as well. $4.99 for the giveaways, $1.99 for our super chat so we can make sure we get to you guys in the questions. We do lives on Tuesday night. Don't miss it. Uh, John, let's go ahead and jump right into the PFL, my man. PFL had their uh, Battle of the Giants from Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. I'm not going to even look at anything as far as below the main card. But if you, unless you want to talk about Rafael Stotts, but let's start off with the main event of the evening was the Battle of the Giants. We had Heenan Fahea taking on the man in his comeback, Francis Ngano, back in an MMA cage instead of a boxing ring. And this one went quick, just like we thought it would. <laughs> yeah, I figured we figured it would go quick. I mean, if you're going to yeah. choose the under on this, it was a pretty safe bet. I felt like if you choose the under, at say one and a half, I think is what it was. That's what we said. <clears throat> I would have taken the under. And, um, you know, I thought, head and head, like, had he go ahead and threw some kicks because his kicks landed well, Francis' kicks landed well. Um, he seemed real hesitant to throw a, a punch, though. And I didn't, I didn't get that part of it all. Like, your only way to victory is by knocking it's him out, throwing, his, throwing your hands. Yep. And making him have a problem. With Francis, we found out his way to victory was takedowns and ground and pound. Did we not say that, though? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I thought he could win on the feet as well. We both did. No, no, he could. But we said the big difference is yeah. Francis will wrestle. Yeah. He will take him down. And if he takes him down and gets on top, even Fahey is going to have a, a hard time getting out of it. And that's exactly how it played out. I mean, you're taking a look and going, you cannot be. And, and, and this is what people don't seem to understand. You cannot quantify the there the huge difference between a 145 pound fighter 135 pound fighter 125 and a heavyweight as far as being on the ground and that punching power and what it does to someone you can't be on your back or have your stomach down on the ground and being hit by a heavyweight especially one like Francis Ngannou you can't so the human body can just can't take that kind of torque yeah and you know you can take more of it as a 125er because of the, the amount of power coming is not near as much. And so you, it takes more shots. Heenan Fahea took a lot. And I'll tell you what, he took too much. Yeah. I'm going to tell you straight out. That fight should have been stopped. 
he got hurt. Oh, yeah. He was he went out, and then still, shots were coming and stuff. And it was like, man, he was not in a position. As soon as he went, you, dude, look at when you see his dick hit the dirt. There's a reason why. Okay, he's fucking done. He cannot well, fucking handle what's occurring. Some, some men are bigger than others, John. Maybe his dick just hangs in the dirt. Who knows? <laughs> um, when I your mean, hips I, hit the ground the way his did, it's mm-hmm. over. And I don't, I don't want to interrupt, but huge shout out. Yes, you out. do. That's why you are. Okay, I want to interrupt. I want to be famous. No, uh, huge shout out to Francis. He lost his son. He came out. Uh, he did that. It's, I cried. I, I, I mean, I'm emotional. But yeah, it, it, it touched my heart, and I can't imagine coming out there and trying to perform after your first knockout loss. You yeah. lost your son. There's all these doubts in your head. Like, bravo to him. You real. cried today? I cried a lot today. You're a fucking white white you're a white boy for Kamala, huh? <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> it's all right, Sometimes. Man. Until it gets uh, to voting. No, I'm kidding, man. I'm kidding. I just saw a video today, so I won't say it's Oh dude, there's <laughs> one guy that put out a, a white man for Kamala thing. I was, was dying, great. man. I was laughing my ass. It was off. great, man. I was laughing. Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> no, I agree with you 100. percent I know that's not a funny moment, but I had to say it because you were like you said you were crying. But yeah. I agree with you, man. It's there, I, I've been through episodes, nothing worse. Nothing worse I, than burying a child. Parents like, are not I, supposed to bury their children. Not that I would know, but like you know, like I said, I've I fought literally ten days after my dad died. I fought a little over ten days after my grandmother died, who was one of the ones that helped raise me. And so it just it was very difficult just doing that. Now having to bury a child, I can't even imagine, man. I can't even imagine. And uh, you could see the emotion on his head and, and you know in his eyes when he was giving his speech afterwards. And uh, congratulations to him, though, on getting it done, moving past the fight, you know, but knowing that he had to get it out of the way. Like, now he can go ahead and rest for a little bit and and get focused on, you know, moving forward in his own personal life. So good for him, man. He's he, – I've only met him once, you know, and just in passing at Extreme Couture's. And I've yeah. seen him in passing. I was in Riyadh. You know, we said hi. And, uh, we just passed each other. That's it. But, I mean, I don't – I think – is we walk past him, right? Like, I mean, I'm at like belly button level. So he probably won't <laughs> know anything half the time that I'm walking past him. So, uh, you know, but like I said, head of a head, he had a chance. Had he thrown punches, he never got off. He just waited. That's like a batter sitting in the batter's box and just letting the strikes go by. You can't, you can't hit a home run. You can't get on base unless you swing, buddy. I mean, you can get on base. You can get walked. But the chances of you, uh, you know, getting walked are pretty slim. He's got he's to go ahead and just. Let the hands go. I got. Um, I have a. I, you talked about size, and this is what people don't realize. Is um, let me see if I can find it real quick. I'm sorry because it's no. funny. This is a picture for there. You go. So this is Rashad Evans. You know Misha Tate, my wife and me, right? And I don't know if you can see it, but that's Francis Ngano in the background. You can see it like he just like had his shoulders <laughs> over us. He's got I mean, his arms around you guys, like kids are yeah, right. just like ah. You go, you look around. What's up, Francis? <laughs> he's a big man. He is. He, he's a he, he is a wonderful person. Uh, so everyone keeps telling me he's like a big he player. is. God damn, he is absolutely. He's got no fucking ego, none. You know, you know what's funny is, I think the I kind of fell in love with him as a person. It seemed like, and I had never really met. I hadn't even met him yet was uh, there was a video of Dan Ige like ripping his body shots right into his gut and Francis yeah. and Dan were just, they it was just a great video to see you have the little tiny guy that they, you know yeah. they all train the same gym and you know Dan laughing and stuff and Francis have you ever kind of have you ever seen him with uh I think it was right it was Ryan Garcia but yeah. he had a he had a body shield on but you know he lets Ryan Garcia just hit rip him with everything he has multiple times with yeah. you know his left hook which he ryan garcia's got a great left hook yeah and he's just ripping bah, 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 bah. he goes over to the right hand francis is like <laughs> yeah <laughs> ripping him he's ah <laughs> you, know, you look and you go yeah he's a he's a he's a big strong man he's a beast uh all right then you got a uh, cyborg was able to uh she ended up going the distance with larissa pacheco yeah and you know i I actually thought this fight was going to go a long ways. I thought, you know, both of them would have power, but both of them were smart in the stand-up. I actually thought, you know, and it went very similar to what I thought that, you know, 
my whole thing was I thought Chris was just a little bit better everywhere. I thought her technique wise in a standup, just a little bit better. Uh, you know, I thought Larissa definitely has power. No doubt she could hurt, you know, Chris, but Chris has power. So it goes back and forth. I thought the ground, I know they're both, you know, black, black, but the wrestling of cyborg, I thought was better and it proved to be, let's just be honest. You know, yeah, this fight, I did not agree with the commentary at all. And I, and I want to say that, you know, if you're going to, if you're going to be a commentator, don't be a homer you know because you work for the pfl and someone's coming out for their first pfl fight i guess as the bellator champion and i'm not doing saying this because of bellator just be honest because if you had listened to dan hardy on the commentary you would have thought that pacheco won that fight she lost 49 46 and that was right that was yeah. the right score you know that's what i had yeah and every judge had it so i'm like well i think it's pretty right yeah, there's a uh, let me uh, let me pull this up real quick. This is just one of a couple that were actually on my uh, on my Twitter feed, and they basically were just talking about how is it me or is there serious biasness from the PFL commentary and replay? It just board? seemed it. It's really annoying. This is people on Twitter basically. They're like, look, they're paying for a pay per view. They want to get honest feedback, and yeah. I understand what you're saying. You know, I really understand what you're saying. So, and not that Larissa didn't have her moments. She had some did. really good moments. She did some good work. But if you're looking at the fight and watching it, and I, I'm okay with, you know, when Randy said, you know, he thought he had it two to two going into the last round. Okay. Yeah. You know, I didn't agree with it, but okay. You, you gave the fourth round to Larissa where she didn't land enough shots compared and everything that happened. You had to give that to Cyborg. But all right, you know, you, you're commentating and you're not really scoring it, so I can understand why, you know, you look at it that way. But there was just like, you know, every there were times Cyborg landed a beautiful shot, beautiful, beautiful left hand by Pacheco. Their fucking left hand missed. What the mm. fuck are you talking about? But I don't know. But I thought it was a good performance by both. The whole thing was about look at the damage. The damage happened in the first fucking round. Yeah. And it was a round that Cyborg clearly won. Clearly. And so that damage is gone. It's over. Move on to the next round. And if she gets more damage, then okay. Yeah. But it just made no sense of what was being said about it. That damage is done in that first round. If it works against her, great. She loses the round. But if she doesn't and she wins the round like she did, then you got to just let it go. doesn't mm. matter. Yeah, no, I agree. I, I'm going to I'm gonna tie this all together at the very end, too, you guys, by the way. Is, uh, there's a lot that I want to say about just the PFL event in, itself uh, towards the end. Uh, but I mean, we're going to move on to Johnny Eblen and Fabian Edwards. You know, this is a rematch. Yeah. You know, we, we'd seen uh, Johnny Eblen win by knockout, you know, on the ground, ground and pound that, that put Fabian Edwards out. Um, but this was a <laughs> – Fabian Edwards is that guy. That, look, he's good. He really is good. And he's getting better as far as, you know, just his ability to handle situations. It's like he never can step on the gas hard yeah. enough when he has to. Yeah. And Someone I don't know if that's... Because, his work all the time. Okay. And, it may, you know, and you'd be better than me at saying, you know, is, is it that he's he's thinking about past performances that he got tired or what, what was it? Because you could tell he was in shape. Yeah. The pressure that, that Evelyn was putting on him, you know, and let's be honest, going into this, I, I'm looking at it saying, Johnny Evelyn should know that I have to put him on his back foot. I have to force him backwards. If I don't force him backwards, he becomes twice as good a fighter coming forward. Yeah. Is that not true? Yeah, I mean, if you didn't take anything away from the Impa, Kasanga and I fight, was yeah. make him fight going backwards. And you'll have success. And in, yeah. that showed in, it showed in the fifth round when he was making him fight. Absolutely. On there you go. Has success. Um, Fabian's coming forward. Look out. Yeah, and he's just hard to deal with. You know, you take a look at what he did to Leoto Machida. Now, I know he was old. Leoto was older. But I'm saying, like, he was putting the pressure on Leoto, making Leoto try to fight, you know, off of his back foot, which he is one of the best in the game at doing. Doing. Leoto yeah. is. But he was just able to take it to the next level in terms of pushing the pressure and making him make a mistake, getting in the clinch, making out of the break, hitting him with the shot, all of those things. 
he fights his best when he's putting the pressure on uh fabian does but for some reason he gets caught up in this relaxation mode fight at my pace do what i want and then the rounds are just ticking away and ticking yeah, away yeah you're letting them go yeah it's it's almost uh, john i've i've been around I, guys like this you, come on it was 4-0 going into the fifth round i know johnny eblin but i've been around guys like this that <clears throat> I think because when they land something very clean, like a good clean body kick, it's almost like, yeah, that scored a lot. I don't know if they have that in their mind. SK, one shot. Yeah, but the guy just hit me with seven of them that were half is good, but seven adds up a lot more than that one. Yeah, it's and two so and a half of them above you. You know, and so it's just kind of that feeling of that they are just counting the strikes in their head of thinking of these are the ones that I felt landed more for me. And then they just let the rounds get away. Oh, I think I landed seven. I think I landed 12. I think I landed, you know, these are the good shots. Okay, I kind of won that round. Because fighters do keep tabs in their head as we're going. Okay, I landed a hard shot there. He landed here. He got the takedown. I got the, I got the get up. Okay, I attacked the submission. Like, we we do start, you know, tallying things up in our head every round. See if, okay, did I win that round? <clears throat> you know, but when we go back to the corner and you ask, did I win that round? Nine times out of ten, we know we lost it. You know? But, I mean, yeah. Nine times out of ten, we and the reason why we ask is we're like, we could have done more, but we didn't. And so when Fabian is in the corner, when Fabian's there, like, you he knows he could have done more, and that's been the knock on him since, you know, early early uh, Bellator days. It was like he's just so relaxed out there; he's making it look easy. But it was like the flow of it all. But when you get to better talent, like he's having to fight now against someone like Johnny Eblen, it's not as easy anymore. Man. It's hard. It's hard to deal with those guys because those guys can find other ways to win. Like tonight with with Michelle Pahea and Fluffy, he he he's not going to let the fight. He's going to develop the fight. He's going to push the action. He's going to take charge, and that's what Johnny Eblen does normally. Yeah. But if you make you make Johnny Eblen fight on his back foot, he's not the same fighter. You know, uh, he, he's still very good, still very dangerous. He's just a better fighter when he's putting pressure. Why? Thus the nickname Thus Johnny the nickname? Pressure. Yeah. You know, so. <clears throat> overall though um fabio were johnny evelyn i thought it was also too a lot more of a respectful fight the first fight there was a lot of animosity a lot of trash talk a lot of this this fight seemed a little bit more serious a little bit more to the nitty-gritty of like look we're here to win That's do me it. a favor tell me because the score was 48 47 mm -hmm. what round did fabian edwards win at before, the fifth before the fifth round only the fifth round See? i don't know i don't know which round okay i couldn't i couldn't tell you I'll have to go back and look to see the scorecards. I don't I think. Like, you, good luck, dude. I don't. Yeah. Th I don't think there was one round that he won. I don't think there was more than two. I don't think there was more than a minute and a half in any, any round that he won. Okay. He just didn't do enough. I, I thought the same thing, but yeah. Unless you missed something. Uh this is the guy you were talking about, Zafar Mosan versus. This is this uh, is the so, this this is Silverback two. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Justin <laughs> Wilcox number two with a little Justin bit more. Justin Wilcox hands. now has an equal in the 145 pound weight class. This guy carries <laughs> as much goddamn muscle. Jeez. I mean, it was like I was like, damn. He put on a great performance. I tell you yeah. what, his judo was fantastic. He did a great job of off balancing Hussein throughout the fight. Uh, I mean. I just really was impressed by the way he went about the fight. Uh, we, I had seen Kata Magomed, uh, uh fight once before. It was early in his career, so I didn't know exactly you know, how much better he was, but he was 11-1 and one at the time. Yeah. He started this fight, <laughs> so I know he's good. Yeah, he looked good. And then uh, I expected more out of Kata Mar uh, Magomedov. I thought for sure that he he just started gassing out. I don't know if it was the strength of Mosin that kind of made him work too hard in the first round, but after yeah. the first round, it was done. Yeah, I thought uh, kind of Mar Mar Magomedov. Kind of Magomedov. Yeah, he looked. Mayev. Mayev. He looked exhausted. Yeah, he, he looked like he there was not a, no pop on him. There was no pressure. He couldn't get the takedowns. It was so, there was quite a few fighters that had that though. Yeah, yeah that's what I want to talk really? about after this. Yeah. Because let's, okay, let's go to the next one because yep. that was a great performance by Mosin. Great job on getting that win. I enjoyed it. But Paul Hughes took on a big, uh, a big step up in my opinion when he was going to this. Obviously, we we know that Paul's good, but he was taking on AJ McKee, and AJ McKee looked flat throughout. Now I was told by people there he lost a ton of weight. 
to make the weight, you know, because he used to fight at 145. Now he's mm-hmm. 155. And they said it was over 20 pounds mm. that he lost to make that weight. And I'm like, and this is what happens. You know, you were talking about the, you know, the air quality and the dust and dirt that's in there and stuff, but they were inside this time. Last time yeah. they were outside. Doesn't matter, John. You're there yeah. all week. You're there all week. The wind kicks up through there. Everywhere you go, it's windy. There's a little, like, a, there's a breeze that runs through, which is nice because it's hot, but the wind whips through. And I was telling you, I go, you have a bunch of uh, dirt boogers. Like, you're blowing your nose <laughs> yeah. all the time. There's, like, the little bit of the black kind of dusty dirt. In it. It's not, it's nothing, there's not pollution there. It's just yeah. dust and sand and, like, it's just dirt in the air from the wind that comes through there. And, um, I, I, I look, I'm not going to sit here and make excuses for AJ. No, I'm not going to sit here and say, I'm going to actually, I'm going to take the foot out of my mouth because I said, I was like, man, I thought for sure AJ McKee was going to be the superior athlete, the superior fighter. He's the better grappler. He's the better wrestler. He's faster than, uh, Paul Hughes. I thought everything that way. I'm going to stand by what I said. I'm going to basically, that should, I'm going to take it right on the chin. That should man. not have been a split decision. Because it, no, no, it was clear that it was clear. It was clear that AJ did not win two rounds. No, he did not. No, I know. I agree. And so yeah, I mean, um, it just it was one of those fights where it AJ just he looked out of sort, and and I'm and not saying Paul made him look that way. Yeah, there, especially after the first couple exchanges, AJ McKee is used to being able to be in the more explosive fighter, the more athletic fighter. He's able to try to do things to you on the ground, whether it's out muscle you, outpower you, whatever it was. But Paul Hughes had something today that just AJ wasn't able to deal with. The tighter boxing, more technical and tighter boxing. AJ was leaving himself out of position a lot. A lot. And every time he threw, he left him his head offline. He he was reaching. He was lunging in. He was exploding in and leaving himself out of position. He was able to be countered. And when he backed out, he backed out with his chin in the air. So it was just one of those um, moments where I had people texting me going, man, is he all right? I'm like, He's just not fighting right. No, he's, he's not. Now, this was another thing. I had six people, six people, two of them work for the PFL, texting me, going, it might be time for him to find another coach. I'm like, that, good luck with that. that good luck happen. with that. That's dad. That That's, you know. Happen. But his dad did say something to me with the last time I was in Fort Lauderdale about them potentially visiting other gyms. Uh, you know, whether it's kill clear, that would be uh, good because that would help him with the people that he's at least being able to train with. Yeah. You know, you, like you, you got it. You know, it's the old iron sharpens iron. Yeah. Iron can break iron, but you got to be putting yourself against people that are of a level above the average to push you in that <laughs> gym, to push you in learning how to do things a little bit different, to push you into that. You know, that whole area where you know, hey, I, I can survive in this and I can go and I can make things happen. AJ, you know, uh, you know, there's no doubt AJ is the big fish, you know, in the Long Beach area and his gym and everything. And there's no one that can really give him a whole lot of problems. You can't Maybe. be the kingpin in your own gym, though, John. I know that. I know that. I know that. You know, and as much as we we really do, I really like Antonio. I know you do too. He's, he's like yeah, a, love I don't want to I don't want to say uh, son because he's he's about your age, so he's like a brother to you. But you know, he's a great guy. He's a he's, he's a fantastic. great role model for his son. Uh, he's already been here, done that. Like he's done all these things at his own level. You know, in fighting. Now he's getting his his son at the, at, at a high level. Just AJ right now is the kingpin in his gym. And I yeah. think that I'm not saying they need to spend all their time at another gym, but they do. I think they, I do need, they think they need to spend some time, whether it be somewhere. Or bring game, people like, in. Yeah. I'll bring people in. That's, I agree bring with you. People in. That can get a little expensive though, John. Yeah. Well, he makes enough money. <laughs> he does. But I mean, my thoughts are is stop buying Cadillacs. There you go. <laughs> That's one. Stop buying the race cars. Yes. And start spending some money on, you know, making sure that you're getting better because tonight, and and I'm not like I said I'm not taking anything from Paul Hughes man tight combinations it, right off the bat you could tell that AJ was uncomfortable when he threw the body kick and Paul yeah. Hughes caught it and then landed a shot off of that and he's like oh then McKee didn't know what to do and then every time AJ threw it again he was able to catch it and sweep it and try to land another shot AJ was lost without that back leg body kick he was getting a little bit lost. He's like, okay, now what do I do? I just box. And then when he was boxing, he was lunging in so much, leaving himself yeah. out of position. 
So there's a little bit of something there where he needs to tighten up the boxing because he's got fast hands, you know, but he, you cannot He's rely. a fast athlete. He is. He's explosive. But that's another reason why he could potentially be getting tired. Yeah. You know, you, you, we've said it before. But we've, but we've seen him. We've seen him go. We have seen him go. Before. Five but, rounds. Okay. So that's going to lead me into my next thing. I'm going to take all these fights outside of the main event. And I'm going to say they all were not their best performances. I had several people calling me, texting me. I'm sorry, not calling me, texting me. Obviously, two of them from the PFL going, man, I thought this card was going to be fire. The fighters just all look flat. All of them. All of them, they didn't, not all of them look good. They're like, man, none of them have really lived up to what we thought. And, well, and yeah. I, I don't know about that, but, I, you know, I, I will say I thought, you know. What do you mean the, you don't the, know about that? Because I thought some of the performances are actually pretty good. I thought the Larissa Pacheco versus Chris Cyborg fight. John, they looked, they both didn't look that great into the they third round. They fought their asses off. They though. did fight their ass off. They took okay. some shots and got cuts. And they, I, I understand that. But look, we've seen Chris Cyborg in the fifth round pushing action, trying to, trying to really try to get the finish. She was backing away in this fight. Like, I'm not saying that it's because so you're, of her you're, you're talking about stuff. the time when Larissa tells her come to the center and she says no, come to no, me. No, I'm not talking about that time, John. I'm not talking okay. about okay. that. Okay, that's right. no one. No one likes to be dog called. So yeah, I, there you go. That to me is like fuck you. I'm not walking. Yeah, fuck this you. <laughs> you. Come to where I'm at. Come I don't give a shit. Yeah. You know, I, no, I just I've seen Cyborg fight at a at a faster and harder pace. I've seen Larissa Pacheco fight at a faster and harder pace. I've seen Johnny Eblen and Fabian. Yeah, Both but that one, them. Johnny Johnny Eblen and Fabian is the natural. The second fight is generally a slower fight, not as not as action packed. It's because both guys are now in that position where they know where they're you know where they want to attack and they know what they want to stay away from and they'll kind of stay away from stuff, which slows the fight down. I totally disagree with you. I think the second fight happens all the time. There's the there are, there are times. No, there's times that. Second fight is Josh Thompson but, but is many times. way faster fight. There's than one. Faster. That's one. Whatever, Josh. One. And your first fight was fast. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, but I mean that's just how it was. Fight fast. <laughs> fight fast. Just like I fuck. Fast. <laughs> yeah, three seconds. You're, You're so giving happy. me too much credit, buddy. You're giving me way too much credit. I got two babies by the head. Uh, yes, you now, do. Um, it just comes down to. I just thought, look, Johnny Eblen and Fabian, we've seen them fight multiple times. It wasn't their best performances between the two. I agree. Uh, and and I'm going to go back to this uh, with the Paul Hughes and AJ McKee. Uh, Paul, I thought, looked good. He did. Um, didn't have to travel as far as some as the as the Americans did. You know, um, I didn't know if Chris went out there sooner. Chris Cyborg did. I don't know if she went out there a little bit more than 10 days or eight days or seven days, whatever it was. Um, you know, See, uh, and, know and that's you. Hold on. We need to, we need to bring this up. The PFL is giving them those ten days, and that's a lot. It is because you know? when you're talking about you know hotel rooms and and per diems and things like that, it gets expensive. But if you're the fighter and you you're in that position where you have fought before, going a long ways, you know, hey, I need at least two weeks. Then you need to you need to get your butt there and spend the the four days that they're not paying for you. Take it out of your pocket. I know it's it's one of those. Wow, well, they'll they'll pay for ten days. If you know you need the two weeks, do the two weeks. It all goes back to like, you know, when you talk about Cain Velasquez and Fabricio Verdun. Yeah. You know, Fabricio did the right thing. He spent a month yep. up at that altitude. Cain spent two weeks and you could see the difference. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, and one, one is a guy that we know as a cardio monster. And the two weeks difference for Verdun was huge. Verdun also had fought there before. He was like, look. I went out, he went out there two weeks before, like Kane did the first time. Yes. And he's like, it was not That's enough. Right. Not enough. So he's like, no, we're going to go out there a month before. And it was a yeah. huge difference, huge difference. But I'm going to go back to my overall wrap on this whole thing. Look, if they're going to, their next three shows are supposed to be in Saudi Arabia or in Dubai or in, in the Middle East. No. Yes. Well, hold on. Well, Japan is potentially happening. I don't think the deal's done yet. But Yeah, but hold that, on. Well, hold on. They have the, the PFL uh, championships is coming up. Yeah, that's in Saudi Arabia. Is that in Saudi Arabia? Yes. Really? Yep. I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. So that, that one's in Saudi Arabia. Then they're talking about doing just one last before they shut Bellator down. They're going to do one last champ first champ. That'll Dubai? Be in Dubai, I think. That's yep. what, that, one, that one's in uh, December. No. No, February, I think. February? Okay. Yep. Yeah. Jan end of January or February. 
<laughs> so that being said, um, that their next three shows, it's hard to get people to follow your fighters when your shows are at say noon on a Saturday. Yeah, um, it's, that's it's one. Rougher. And then also to all your best fighters are on pay per view, and people are like they don't even really know your pay per view is going on. So that was another thing today. People were texting me like, "Hey, what's the PFL?" I'm like, "It just ended." <laughs> Where are you saying you don't think they did enough advertising? Oh, I know they didn't do enough advertising. But that was the knock on Bellator too when we were working for Bellator. It was it wasn't enough advertising. Like you can't you can't be on Showtime. Not I don't think that I don't think Bellator did advertise enough, and I think the PFL advertised a, a whole lot more than Bellator used to. Yes, but I, I at least but, saw the the commercial with the giants of. You're right. You know, but Bellator also and, wasn't pay per view for eighty something dollars or sixty dollars no, or whatever the pay per view was. That's true. That's so true. Bellator, if you missed it, it was like the, you know it was part of your Showtime ten ninety nine or whatever it was. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Look, I, I, I'm going to, this is the last thing I'm going to say about this is knowing that a lot more, if they continue to get funding from, from Saudi Arabia, knowing that a lot of these fights are going to end up probably being over there because that's what they're paying for. They want to make sure that you're bringing the talent there. They want to sure. have fights in their, in their uh, country, which I understand. Look, if I'm spending $275 million a year to basically make this thing work and I'm not getting really anything in return except having fights here. I might as well have it here front row so I can sit and watch it in person instead of on TV. True. That being said, if I'm AJ McKee, if I'm these other guys, I mean, I have no desire to fight in another country. Just being honest. Like now I know you, I know like like if there's fights here in the States, but to fight somebody that like like i guess i guess i'm gonna do forrest griffin how oh. often did he fight outside of Ute vegas very seldom very seldom you know and when he did he hated it yeah i can I, 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 i'm thinking of the anderson silva fight that was it about the, right? that was it yeah that was it and so i know that you shouldn't you shouldn't be sitting here picking and choosing where you want to go fight and you know hey you fight when they tell you but if you know that they're like towards the end of the year they're going to have all their shows pretty much your Riyadh. I would try to do as many fights on the off when you're here in the States or when you're in Canada or wherever you have fights at. I don't know where they're having fights at, you know, in, in the UK, whatever it is. But it's a lot easier to travel to the UK if you're on the East Coast, six hours, and you're over there. Sometimes less, sometimes more, depending on where it's at, you know, where you're at. Um, if you're on the West Coast, trying to go from West Coast all the way to Saudi Arabia and then fight. Yeah, that's rough. Oh, man, that's painful. Yeah. And so... I guess understanding who your opponent is and being like, okay, if I'm, if I'm AJ McKee and I'm fighting somebody who is from California or for someone who's from Texas or someone who's same, from basically the same type of travel yeah, time zone, almost time zone, same type of trip. Okay. Look, then we're just shaking, you know, we're, we're taking our chances. We're rolling the dice, but you're fighting someone from already in the UK. Who's literally like, just, it's, I wouldn't say it's a hop, skip and a jump. It's still, it's still not still easy. Far. It's still not easy. It's still far. Yeah. Um, you know, but it's, it's a little bit less wear and tear. They get in, you know, same time as you, they have a little more, they're kind of already adjusted more to the time zone than you are. A little bit. It's a big difference. And, uh, and then I'm going to go into, you know, with Johnny Evelyn and, and Fabian, same thing can be said about them. Johnny Evelyn's on the East coast though. So he's in Florida. It's not it's as a three difficult. hour difference. It's a three hour difference. And then, you know, having to fly overseas, get there. Fabian already being in Birmingham. You know, uh, I don't know where Cyborg was coming from and Larissa Pacheco. I don't know where they were coming from. Cyborg's coming from California. <clears throat> okay. I mean, Pacheco's, Pacheco's coming from Georgia. See, Cyborg has been known to fly out normally two, three weeks early, sometimes at wherever she was going to fight. Yep. I know She'll the history go early. of that. Yeah. So I'm, I'm giving the input, my own personal input is that if you have a big time fight like that, you need to spend the time or the money or talking to the promotion about making sure you can get out there two weeks before. Um, I, and I would almost say a minimum of two weeks before. Now, you may not have the training partners you need, but look, all your work should already be done that two weeks before. Your last week is just recovery, getting good food, all those things. That last hard week, it's hard to miss out on that. But if you bring it, if you bring a training partner with you, you get some good rounds in, and making sure that, that partner is with you as well. You don't need to be sparring super hard anyways on that last week. You can no. spar super hard, maybe that Monday or that Tuesday, and then pretty much you're done, you know, sparring hard up until the day of the fight. Giving yourself a full 10 day body recover is very important. I, I don't know. I'm just speaking out loud, but what I saw from a lot of these fighters, and if you're going to continue to have more fights over there, as, as 
like three or four a year over there, fighters start being prepared to make adjustments to your contracts that you would like to be out there for two weeks. You would like to have a, a training partner flown out with you. Start thinking about that. You know, they're spending a lot of money on this promotion. They're dip, they're dropping a lot of money in the PFL. So if they're dropping a lot of money in the PFL, they want to see good fights. Well, if you want to see good fights, then I need to be there two weeks before because it's such a big time change. At least the arena looked like it had a lot of people in it. It so, did? Yeah. I mean, it was all blacked out on the side, so I couldn't really uh, see. Uh, and normally, nice. John, you know that these fights don't normally acquire a lot of people. Yeah, but that one actually looked at the, the way, Here's another thing I, I thought the PFL did. They're using Michael C. Williams. Michael C. Williams is one of the best announcers. He brings class to it. I like it. Absolutely. That. MCW is a beast, man. I yeah. love him. He's he just get, classy. He, he does everything. Classy. For, yeah, first top notch. Top notch. Yep. <clears throat> okay, so that's going to be wrapping up on our, our PFL. And uh, like I said, this episode is uh, brought to you by BetUS. It's also brought to you by Element. I'm about to finish my watermelon right now. There you go. <laughs> and I'm about to finish it right now. And. And. Only fans. You guys join us over there at OnlyFans. John, I was waiting for John to say it. I, you you got to tell me that oh, you want man. me to. I don't know. You normally take we'll off our that. partnership over there with them. Um, we want to thank you guys for supporting us over there. I think we got about 800 members right now. And it's rising. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to start doing some more stuff over there for you guys. But please join us over there. Join our live chats. I'm going to probably do a live chat probably this week sometime after we do our live show. Uh, this Tuesday, I will let you guys know the date and the time on when I'm going to do my live chat over there on OnlyFans. So subscribe to us over there. It is free. Thanks, guys. <clears throat> what else you got for us, George? Is there anything uh, else? I got one thing. You sent it earlier. I thought it was quite humorous. Okay. Dominic Cruz goes off on John Anik. What? <laughs> yeah, I'll let you listen to it. Oh, man. to do better publicly. Don't he listen. Since that I know where you it. stand. Like, you want to save fighters. You're one of those that thinks that we need to be saved, you know? I don't need your fucking help. I got it. Stay out of my fucking way. Let me money. Get the fuck out of here. All of you. We need to save him from, from weight cuts. Weight cuts are bad. What about fighting healthy? What are we talking about? This is so ignorant. You're Don't right. Save me. Leave me alone. Let me make my fucking money. Earlier we had Keith Peterson. <laughs> oh great. man, Dom. Dom, Dom, Dom. I he, I think he was just giving uh look, John Anik obviously has a huge heart. And I think everyone that we've ever we've had him on the show and everyone I've ever talked to that has been close with him said he's just just the salt of the earth. He is a fantastic human being. And um, and I believe people. I believe people when they're talking about John Ag. He just seems like he wears his heart on his sleeve. He is straightforward with you. And he really, really loves his job to the point where he puts so much work in that people are like, man, you're overdoing it. You're doing this. You're doing, no, man, you're not overdoing it. You're, that's what makes you probably the best, I think, the best at it right now. He's definitely probably the best at it right now. He's so damn good. And there's not much more I can compare him to because, you know, the the other shows don't have the the level which he does, which he achieves to. So he is a fantastic human being. I was just laughing because, you know, fighters, that's the mentality the fighters have. Leave me alone, man. Get out of my way. Let me make my money. Let me do this. Let me do that. That's that's the yeah. fighter mentality. I'll do it myself. Screw you. <laughs> and then after it's all said and done, we're asking for people's help. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know what? Like a Dom, Dom is, uh, he's a special fighter. Yeah. Uh, and, and he is a guy that he's tough as other. if you go back and you watch one of my favorite fights I ever did was a Dominic Cruz fight against Cody Garbrandt. Now I'm not saying it's one of my favorites based upon, you know, how well Dominic did in it because it was one of his harder fights and he, he got, he got, uh, got tuned up. He took a lot of damage in that fight. But it was one of the things that made it one of my favorites was exactly how tough he is, how, you know what, he just kept coming, even when, you know, things were not going his way. And you, and you understand when, when things aren't going your way and, you know, you got a guy who's 
almost, you know, he's doing break dancing inside, you know, off of things and he's not making the mistakes that you thought he would make mm-hmm. and where you could take advantage of him. And he keeps on doing really smart things and you go, son of a bitch. And he keeps lighting you up and, and he puts you down and then, you, and I, and I was so impressed with Dominic and the fact that, you know, he just kept on, Hey, I'll just keep marching forward and, you know, hopefully one of these things will work and it never did for him, but God damn. You look at the effort that he put out in that fight in yeah. what was absolutely Cody Garbrandt's greatest performance ever. You know, it, it taught me a lot about who Dominic Cruz is deep down inside. And he is the guy. Yeah, I don't need your help. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, he is. you don't don't you stop my fight, you know. And that, and that when you're in the back with him, what's one of the first things he says, John, just don't stop my fight. Yeah. Okay. I got you. You know, okay. there's uh there's one more thing that I wanted to talk about real quick. And um most of you guys that have followed us for a long time know that, like, I'm not a big fan of Michael Chandler, and um, and and I, I am. I, I don't. I, I don't. I'm, John is, and I have a lot I of am. friends that are actually, you know, friends with him, and I'm okay with that. That's I'm not trying to tell people not to be friends with people. That's not my thing. Okay. Um, no, but you've had you've had you've had situations with him. Yeah, that yeah, has I, made yeah, it, that has made it to where. Mm-hmm. All right, you guys aren't going to be friends. Yeah, and I'm and I'm okay friends. with that. Yeah, yes. I'm sure he is too. So we're yes. good. But I think so. That all being said, one thing that is off limits, he's talking about people's wives kids. and their kids, dude. And I, I know I wanna, what you're talking about now. I wanna I wanna say something that you know there was there was there's this other MMA guy who runs around. I think they call him like the, he's called the MMA guru. Yep. And um. You know, he says some things about me. He says some things about John. He says some things about our podcast. And we're just kind of shunned it on. I was, I'd never heard of him until about probably about three or four months ago. And now he, he I saw he got in the news because he was talking shit about the, the girl, the reporter. <coughs> What's her name? There's the a female works- reporter. Uh, he criticized her size uh, and uh, the fact that. The oh, Amy Kaplan. Should- yeah. yeah. I wrote something to her. Was it Amy Kaplan? Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Then he criticized that other girl, the new one Nina, that's working for Nina the, Drama. Nina, Nina Drama. Okay. I, I I see her. I don't know, you know, how big she is. Criticizing a lot of people, huh? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. But then he goes on and he says something about Michael. What does that Chandler, say about him? That he's a true piece of shit. Okay. So <laughs> look, kids and wives and family, I think, are should always be off limits, you know, especially when someone isn't really trying to get anything out of it. Like Michael Chandler's not doesn't seem like he, you know, he loves his kids. He's adopted his kids. He's married to his wife. They've been married for a long time. He's been a fantastic father to his kids. Yes. He's always taking them with him and being, you know, there for him. So like I wanted a to, dad should be. I wanted to say that I'm going to play the, well, I guess, apparently what Guru said, this guy. Chandler's kids and Chandler, you know, sometimes kids, uh, it's, you just got to pull yourself up by the bootstraps and, uh, you know, it's really the learning that we do as we fail. Hey, man, shut your mouth, man. We ain't trying to listen to that shit right now, you damn pussy bitch, man. That's Chandler's kids and Chandler at home. Um, come on, kids. I mean, sometimes it's the journey that makes us who we are, right? Turn that shut off. Shut your bitch ass up, man. We ain't trying to listen to you right now, man. You got crap. <laughs> Give it 10 years. That'll be accurate. Um, Chandler's kids and Chandler. You know, sometimes- Just good guy. Good, good guy. Just the true piece of shit. So, look, man, I, I really, I, I don't know. It, it's one of those moments where it's disgusting to see. It really is disgusting. Josh, to see. real simple. You can't give people class. No, man. Okay, and if you're gonna sit there and you, you know, you talk about you know, just people that have never ever done anything in the sport to make yeah. it better, to try to improve it, to try to do things that, you know, you know, make you stand out as someone who's, you know, in this world and is uh, attained a certain status. What has he ever done? He mm-hmm. runs his mouth. Big you deal. know, Chandler had a good response, said, uh, just setting some light on this individual who we unfortunately have to call one of our fellow members of the human race. Do your, <laughs> okay. hate, do your hateful thing, man. But leave our kids alone. It's it's disgusting. It's gross, and I feel I, you know what's funny is they have all the little he has his little trolls, you know, that kind of attack people online and do their thing. And maybe it's a bunch of just, um, you know, his his side 
uh, Twitter accounts and stuff. He's probably got like 50 of them where he just goes on and talks probably. about shit. But I look at him and, and I think to myself, like you work in this MMA community, you haven't done shit in MMA. That's one. Two is you're really just coming in here and you're attracting all the negative people. And that's not what this community was built on. We first started building this MMA community. It was no matter what we fought, we all went out and hang out at the, at the bar, you know, at the hotel bar and had drinks together. We all went out to the club afterwards and we all saw each other at the after parties. You know, the UFC used to throw after parties where all the fighters would get together and hang out. You know, that went away after a couple episodes of a couple fights, things, a couple <laughs> fights, but it was normally not the fighters fighting. It was people trying to fight the fighters, you know? And so it just, it was one of those things where this was a small community of fighters that, and people that help grow this sport and to have somebody like him come in and do what he's doing right now and just disrespecting people's families, their kids, their wives, everything like that. And then all the things that he always says, he's just, apparently he's just nonstop. People constantly hit me up. Oh, guru said this about you. Guru said that about Wayne. A. Guru said this. I'm like, I've never listened to one of his shows. No. But if you guys are listening, well, to this you know guy, why? What's he going to teach me? Thank you. Yeah. So what's the point? But to be a wise line, ass. The bottom line is, is if you guys are supporting this type of negative people and this divisive, uh, divisiveness of, uh, amongst divisiveness, divisiveness amongst people, like really, like you're causing this. Look, like, I can have my problems with people, and I could chant. I could basically, you know, take little jabs, but it's not that I wouldn't say to his face, and I have said it to his face. But that oh, you, you met him? Yeah. That that doesn't mean no, not him. I'm saying Chandler. Oh, oh. I mean, my thing is like, I have said it to his face. So this guy would never. And everyone's like, oh, he's like six threes. This I would molly so what? this fucking piece of shit. <laughs> I would fucking dog walk him up and down yeah. the fucking street. Doesn't matter. I don't give a shit if he's six three or four, whatever. What does that do? And coming from a former fuck? fatty myself, he he lost a lot of weight. So it's like, doesn't like, matter. I'm I know, time. but he it's like fucking weight back on. I'd still fucking dog walk his ass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyways, I know I went on too much, but th I thought this was complete disrespect. And I think if you guys are giving cre uh, credence to this guy, man, you guys need to stop. Stop giving this guy a platform and start hitting him where it counts, man. His pocketbook. I know he does his live chats every day. That's what he lives off of. And you guys are all there just feeding his fucking fuel and this negative energy. And it drives me crazy because these are the type of people that really bring down sports and really bring down other people. It's disgusting. It's absolutely disgusting. So, but I, I wanted to finish this thing on a high note. So, John, give me some sort That's, of high note to finish it off. That is not a high note. I know but it's not. Look at all. I, all I have to say is, you know, there, 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 there are positive people out there, and then sometimes there's negative people. Don't be one of those negative people. Be the positive person. Do something good for somebody. You know, make their life better. It'll actually make you better. And so, that's what we'd like to see. So we will see you.